really should have called this hurdles to home ownership because we don't believe there's actual actually any barriers. We are here to help folks, lower income people below 100% of median income, mount those hurdles and become homeowners. But some of those hurdles include obviously just basically your income relative to sales prices. So uh, we're targeting folks below 100% of median income. Um, the majority of our homeowners are below 75% of median income. So 80% of median income for a household of three is $59,350. And my, the next slide will talk about what people can afford. But the median single family home price in Chittenden County, this is for new and existing, is $300,000. That income, those the income and the and the sale price just don't line up, obviously, right? <laughs> um, another hurdle to home ownership is, folks come to us, uh, a lot of young families, they have high outside debt, and yes, consumer debt, some credit card debt, but more importantly, very high student debt, and then car loans. Uh, we all know how important a reliable vehicle is in Vermont. You have to have a reliable car, you take on a car loan. And those that uh, debt impacts your ability to afford a loan. And then it's very difficult for folks, because of the high debt, um, to save for a down payment. High debt and high rents. So down payment becomes another hurdle that we're hopefully able to help with. This is probably maybe a little hard to see from where folks are seated, but it gives you that general, what is 80% of area median income, what is 100% of area median, in median income, and how do we actually calculate affordability? So what we do is, in the first column, you take somebody's income, we assume 30% of a person's income is available for housing debt. Now, m banks will go higher than that, but where the folks that we're working with, because they have that other outside debt, we're working w within that 30% that ratio for your housing costs. Um, out of that housing cost, you take your taxes, insurance. If there's a condo, this is an example for a single family, but with a condo, you would have to subtract out that condominium cost, your um, condo fee. And that shows you what's left to pay uh, for the mortgage. So if you look under the 80% of AMI uh, household of three here, you see that they're able to afford a home at 208,000. And the, the median home in Chittenden County is 300,000. So that's the gap that we're talking about. You can go ahead. So the Champlain Housing Trust has a shared equity home ownership program. We have over 600 homes in Chittenden County that are in our portfolio. Because once we help somebody buy a home, that home becomes a part of our portfolio and will remain perpetually affordable through sharing the equity, the shared equity program. We're serving folks up to 100% of median income. Um, we have three basic ways that we can help folks into, or uh, three products. We have homes that are in our system that are being resold so people can buy those. Uh, we partner with developers such as Brad and bring in new construction product. And then we uh, sometimes have subsidies available where uh, a family can go out and find a home that's just on the market, an existing home, and we'll help them through the assistance of a grant to purchase that home and, and make it affordable for them. Those are the, uh, in any one of those cases, buyers are receiving a down payment assistance grant, and it's generally between 20% and 40% of the total purchase price. It acts as their down payment, so that f that hurdle of down payment is is uh, is left over, is is mounted <laughs> through the through the use of this grant. It acts as the buyer's down payment, which is huge for all of our buyers. That down payment is a really big hurdle. In exchange for that grant, the buyers then agree to share appreciation when they sell their home. And I'm going to go over exactly what that means, but they're agreeing to take 25% of the market appreciation and leave the rest of the appreciation behind in the home to make it affordable to the next buyers. The buyers, we work with um, all of the local banks. Uh, most of our buyers are using a VHFA loan. Um, that has a very favorable rate um, always. Right now it's 3.875%. Uh, so most of our buyers are going to a bank and getting a VHFA loan. So this next slide will show you how our program increases the purchasing power of um, a household earning $48,000 a year. Here's the what they can afford uh, with a conventional loan. 
and then how we're able to increase their buy-in their buying power, right? So we'll go through this. They have 30% of their uh, income available for their housing cost. Property taxes is the first place you see this difference. Homes that are in our shared equity program, and, and those of you from towns know, um, we the homes need to be assessed at their um, resale price, which is essentially 75% of the market value. So there's already, that helps immensely in terms of the affordability for these folks because their property taxes are going to be slightly lower. They have more available for a mortgage. You have homeowner's insurance. Uh, conventionally, people, if you don't have a 20% down payment, you have to pay private mortgage insurance, and that's a monthly cost. Because our grant is providing 20% uh, down payment assistance, we get rid of the private mortgage insurance. That, again, increases their ability to afford a mortgage. We do, though, uh, in single-family homes, uh, we charge a lease fee. We actually take title to the land and lease the land back to folks, so there is that lease fee. But here's the difference in the mortgage payment, uh, what's available for a mortgage payment. Here's what they can afford just in the mortgage. We've already increased their ability to take on a higher mortgage, and then we add in the CHT subsidy. And that number ranges. It depends on the product and, and the resale, but generally about 50000 in a down payment grant. So you can see we're getting closer to uh, an actual home that someone could find on the market uh, at closer to 250000 so when somebody decides to sell their home, once th we've helped them to purchase it, um, the, the shared equity portion of our program is that um, at the resale, the homeowners take, they sell the home for what they paid for it. So 100% of any reduction in their loan, they're taking that out when they sell the house, right? 100% of the reduction of the debt because they're selling it for what they paid for it plus 100% of any of the value that they have added to the home through their own efforts. For example, they built a garage or they added a, a bedroom. They get 100% of the value that they added by that capital improvement to the property. We have a formula that, that captures that value. But they're getting 25% of the appreciation just that's due to the market. Um, out of that new sale price, we take a fee to facilitate the sale because we essentially are agreeing to purchase the home back from them and find another buyer and then sell it to that new income qualified buyer. So we take a fee there, but most of the appreciation actually stays with the home and it, cre it increases. So homes in our system become more affordable over time. We can actually serve a lower income household the next at the next sale. Uh, one of the ways that we bring homes into our, our portfolio is by partnering with uh, private developers such as Brad um, with the inclusionary zoning product. And, you know, honestly, um, we've seen I inclusionary zoning is administered and the, and the policies are very different from town to town. And we would always love to sit down with different towns. I, I actually was talking to Mike Simino, who's on the South Burlington Affordable Housing Committee. They wanted to gather... Uh, folks from all of the area towns together to talk about policies, including inclusionary zoning. And we would love to do that. We're always open to doing that. Uh, we would, we'd like to see some changes to the general kind of uh, inclusionary zoning rules out there. We, uh, typically, it's 10% of a new project uh, needs to be affordable. We'd love to see that be fewer units, maybe 5%, but with a deeper subsidy. Because we found that with the inclusionary zoning prices, um, we're not able to really target the folks that are needing that affordable housing. And if we could do a deeper subsidy on fewer units, we'd be able to sell those units without needing to bring further subsidy to the table. Uh, the, uh, I'm getting a little wonky here. Maybe we'll get into this during the discussion. <laughs> but typically, you're, you're setting your price based on 1.5 people per bedroom in a new home, and we want it, 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 that's not who we sell it to. We're not selling a two-bedroom apartment to a three-person household. We're selling it to a two-person household, typically. So that would make a big difference in terms of the affordable price. Um, this is a really important thing that most inclusionary zoning policies uh, are, you're setting the price as affordable to 80%, and then you have to sell it to a household at 80%. 
you don't have a big enough window there. If you set a price at 80%, that means the only people who can buy it are m earning exactly 80% of median income, and that whole household is really hard to find. So what we recommend is that you set the price at 80%, and then we're able to sell it to folks up to 100%. Then you've got a window of people who need that housing, but who are actually going to be able to afford it. And then always uh, to require perpetual affordability. When, um, when requiring inclusionary zoning units. So I'm sure there's, other, there's lots to talk about in terms of um, other ways for towns and communities to support um, affordable housing. I'll just say that we often get calls from um, planners and from developers in different communities asking, saying, I have a requirement to do inclusionary zoning. I need to do some affordable units in my new development. Um, will you work with us? And we often will. There's sort of criteria that we look at. One is, uh, where is it located? We're, we're typically wanting a smart growth location. Is it a good spot for our, for our buyers? Uh, what is the product and the price? Like anybody, right? So um, especially single family homes, we'd love to bring more single family homes into our portfolio. We have a lot of condominiums in our portfolio. They're great, they're affordable. We'd love to get more single family homes. And then it's just, as Brad was alluding to, do we have the subsidy available? It's a very limited resource. And so it, it always, it ebbs and flows, the availability of that resource.